Muy buenas a todos jóvenes, ¿qué tal? ¿Cómo estáis? Bienvenidos a Juegos Perdidos y bienvenidos nuevamente al asesinato en el Orient Express. Para mí es un placer poder contar con vuestra compañía, gracias por el apoyo al canal y sobre todo también a esta serie, una serie que me consta que os está gustando mucho y que también se está empezando a complicar. ¿eh? Así que, bueno, lo primero de todo, daros las gracias y por supuesto pediros que si os gusta, os queréis, que le deis un like y que os suscribáis al canal para que de esta forma más personas puedan conocer juegos perdidos. Lo dicho, se está empezando a complicar porque ahora ya hemos arreglado la calefacción y entonces ahora ya podemos hablar con todos los personajes y estamos entrando nuevamente en cada uno de los vagones porque ya tenemos, o compartimentos mejor dicho, y ya tenemos eh, las llaves para poder hacerlo, que es la llave maestra. Y bueno, de momento nos estamos dando cuenta de que en algunos de ellos pues se encuentran los, los sospechosos, los personajes. Entonces empezamos a hablar y ya empieza esto a complicarse relativamente. ¿eh? Um, de momento de todo lo que hemos eh, hablado aquí nos pone los sospechosos y de la princesa Dragomirov creo que ha sido la que más detalle nos ha arrojado era amiga de Linda Arden madrina de Sonia Armstrong Linda Arden en el anterior bloque de partidas me quedé preguntando quién es Linda Arden bueno pues creo recordar que Linda Arden es la madre de Sonia y si no luego después posiblemente a lo mejor en algún momento lo despejarán la duda ¿eh? pero yo creo que es así ¿eh? no estoy haciendo trampas no estoy mirando nada en ninguna parte ni el libro ni nada quiero centrarme en la historia y quiero sumergirme en ella teniendo muy presente de que puede ser que a lo mejor haya haya, haya ciertos detalles que hayan cambiado lo hayan hecho los desarrolladores para que de esta forma haya emoción en la historia. Aristocracia, aristocracia, un dragón, aristocracia, aristócrata, sería, ¿no? Lo suyo. Un dragón por fuera, pero capaz de sentir una gran compasión en su interior. Vale, estuvimos hablando también con... ¿Con quién estuvimos hablando? Yo creo que fue... Vale, conversación... Arbur... Arbur North. Sorprendentemente calmada, gran fuerza interior. Arbur North. Estuvimos hablando con este, el coronel. Eso es. Estuvimos hablando con el coronel. Coche de limpia limpiapipas. Oficial del ejército muy orgulloso. Bronceado de mentes opiniones. Enamorado de Mary. Esa es la idea. ¿no? Da la sensación de que ellos están... Puede ser que a lo mejor estén casados y que esto sea algo inmoral o que estén esperando a separarse de sus respectivos maridos, no lo sé, no lo sé, aquí ya esto ya es hablar por hablar. Bueno, vamos a hablar con ella porque me parece que con esto no llegamos a hablar nada. Esta es la... Eh, no sé quién es. Esta mujer no sé quién es. Well, it's about time. I must say. Here I am with information that will solve your mystery for you, and it's hours before you show up. You are helping that famous detective, or whatever he is, aren't you? Americana. Yes, madam, I have that honor. I would think you'd be more on your toes. In America, the police would have arrested the culprit by now on my evidence. Then let us proceed without delay. <laughs> May I have your passport, please? My passport? What do you want my passport for? I'm the witness, not the murderer. What is wrong with you people in this country? This is Yugoslavia, madam. I am French. <laughs> That's what I said. Your passport. Thank you. You are Caroline Martha Hubbard of Great Neck, is it? Long Island? That's what it says, doesn't it? So look at Bonnie, but you know, you know, you know, a mí no me interesa lo que ponga, me interesa de dónde es usted. Que puede poner cualquier cosa, ¿no? Vale. You are traveling to Paris to meet your daughter? Yes. Then I'm supposed to sail for home the day after tomorrow. Though, how can I do that stuck here? I'll never know. Me escucho algún sonido procedente del compartimento emocional. Did you hear any sounds coming from Monsieur Ratchet's room? Well, earlier I'd asked that Swedish lady, Mrs. Olsen, if she had anything for a headache. She's a nurse, you know. Yes, I know. 
Poor soul. Looking for my room, she'd opened the door to Mr. Ratchet's compartment by mistake. He laughed and said something not very nice, I think. But I couldn't make it out. She said, oh, I make a mistake. I ashamed to make a mistake. And that bizarre accent of hers. And he laughed again and said something about her being too old. The idea. My late husband, Mr. Hubbard, and I enjoyed conjugal relations right up to the very end. Anything else? After that, I heard snoring. Quite loud, like an airplane engine revving up. What color is your dressing gown? What an odd question. I have two dressing gowns, if you must know. A pink flannel that's kind of cozy on board ship, and a purple silk number that my late husband, Mr. Hubbard, gave me. But what in creation do you want to know that for? Someone in a scarlet kimono was seen coming out of either your compartment or Monsieur Ratchet's. It is very difficult to tell sometimes which is which when all the doors are closed. Well, it wasn't mine. Then it must have been Monsieur Ratchet's. That wouldn't surprise me any. I thought I heard a voice in there. Oye, una mujer en el compartimento de Monsieur, de Monsieur Ratchet. Interesante. Me encanta lo bien hecho que están, o sea, las... Uh... Los diálogos en el... Y no quedó ninguno. El primer juego que realizó esta desarrolladora. Eh... La verdad es que dejaba bastante que desear. Era todo muy muy frío. Pero aquí... Está muy bien, ¿eh? Está muy, muy, muy bien. ¿Was it a woman you heard in Monsieur Ratchet's room? Yes. I think it was. Did you hear what was said? Well, I didn't put a glass up to the connecting door and eavesdrop for heaven's sakes. What sort of a person do you think I am? Pues, una me todo. <laughs> When was it you heard this voice? I have no idea. Sometime after the snoring died. Was it before or after the train stopped? After. After the man in my room that you have so far failed to ask me about. I woke up, heard the voice, and that was that. Tell me about the man you thought was in your room. At last. No offense intended, <laughs> sweetie, but you foreigners do just about everything backwards. The man... While I was in bed, I woke up, all in the dark it was, and I knew, I knew I tell you that there was a man in there with me. In your bed? In my what? How dare you? No, in my compartment. <laughs> I was just so scared I couldn't scream. I just lay there and thought, mercy, I'm going to be killed by some foreigner. These nasty trains. I just lay there with my eyes closed and thought of America. Somehow I got my wits about me and I felt about with my hand and... And I felt. Yes? The bell button. I pressed it and pressed, but no one came. I thought, mercy, what if they'd murdered every single soul on the train? I went on pressing the bell, and at last, footsteps in the corridor. I dragged on my dressing gown, the pink one. I screamed, come in, and switched on the lights, and would you believe it? There wasn't a soul there. Madre mía, de luego esta mujer tuvo una pesadilla. O se le fue la cabeza, así que se le nota que está alterada. Michael abrió la puerta y entró. Michael examinó su compañero. Michelle opened your door and entered. Yes, although considering the time it took him to arrive, he must have come by dog sled. <laughs> he seemed to imagine I dreamt the whole thing. I tell you here and now, I'm not one to imagine things. Michelle searched your compartment. Yes, even under the chair. Although he said there wasn't room for a man to squeeze himself under there. I asked him to check the connecting door. Was it bolted? No, but I knew it had been because I asked the Swedish lady to check it when she brought me the headache powder. Before Michelle arrived, did either door open and close? Sweetie, my eyes were squeezed shut tighter than a banker's fist. I didn't see. And with the bell making all that racket, The intruder could have dynamited a hole in the wall, and I wouldn't have heard it. Do you remember the Armstrong kidnapping? I'll say I do. How that wretch that did it escaped scot-free, I'll never understand. I'd have liked to get my hands on him. You could have, madam, when the connecting door was unbolted. You mean, Ratchet was the man? Yes, his real name was Cassetti. Well, imagine that. Wait till I tell my daughter. Were you acquainted with the Armstrong family? Well, they were from New York, too. But no, they moved in a very exclusive circle. I've always heard that Mrs. Armstrong was a perfectly lovely woman and that her husband worshipped her. It was all incredibly sad. I would like to dust the doorknob of the connecting door 
for fingerprints. My, aren't you the little improviser? Be my guest, sweetie. Search the whole place if you'd like. I need a drink. Mrs. Hubbard, wait. You dropped this. That's not mine. I thought as it has the initial H on it... I've got mine right here. See? It's marked CMH, and it's a sensible thing. Not that flimsy, expensive Parisian cambric. What good is a hanky you can't sneeze into? Ah, lo ha hecho bastante bien, eh. Ha dicho, se le ha caído esto. Y dice, no, 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 si esto no es mío. Ha sido <ríe> muy inteligente, eh. Disculpe, se le ha caído esto. <ríe> bien. Entonces aquí se puede buscar. Quite interesting. Ahí está. Pero todavía no podemos. Porque se ve, algo nos falta. No, no, o sea, no sé. Ella ya estaba hablando acerca de sacar huellas dactilares, pero porras, ¿cómo sacamos las huellas dactilares? Quite interesting. Yo estoy convencido de que el, el carrete tiene que servir para eso. ¿Por qué es donde está el carrete? Aquí. Pero no. Algo tengo que hacer. Tengo que mezclar... No sé. No, es que... Tengo que... Tiene que haber algo. Vale, es que con esto la servilleta... Con esto lo limpiaríamos. Pañuelo delicado. Este pañuelo no se parece al que se encontró en el compartimento de la chat. CMH. Bueno, pues nada. No sé cómo sacar la huella de atilares. Seguimos sin saber. A no sé de qué poero me diga... ¿Hay alguna novedad? Este se va a conservar, bien conservadito, ¿eh? I found this button from your tunic in the American lady's compartment. I have lost no button, mademoiselle. There must be some mistake. Then perhaps it was dropped by the man she said was in her room. There was no one there. The lady must have imagined it. I need to ask you some questions about Monsieur Ratchet's death. But of course, mademoiselle Marceau. I will do anything I can to help. <laughs> when, the the when was the body discovered? The valet of Monsieur Rachette, uh, he tapped several times at the door this morning. There was no answer. Then, half an hour ago, Lucien, the waiter, came. He wanted to know if Monsieur was taking déjeuner. It was eleven o'clock, you comprehend. Continue. I opened the door for him with my pass key. But there is a chain, too, and that is fastened. There is no answer, and it is very still in there, and so cold. The window opened. I borrow the engineer's hammer and break the chain and go in. Monsieur Rachette was... Uh, oh, it was terrible. Uh, the chain was fastened. It must have been suicide. I'm sorry, Michel. A person does not commit suicide by stabbing himself 12 times. No. I suppose not. ¿Me llamó alguien la pasada noche después de que lo haramos? Did anyone call for you last night after we spoke? Yes, I made up the bed of the young American gentleman, Mr. Rachet's secretary. At what time? It must have been uh, about a half hour later. 1.45. About that, yes. The English colonel from uh, number 15 was with him. The colonel went back to his own compartment as I prepared the American gentleman's bed. Did you see anyone moving about last night after we spoke? The English colonel returned to his compartment. Uh, no one after that. Did you leave the car at any time last night after Belgrade? Well, uh, I did go back to talk to Matteo, uh, the attendant in the Athens-Paris car. 
When was that? Not long after one. How long were you gone? A few minutes only. One of my bells rang. Uh, you remember, it was the American lady. She had rung several times. I hope the investigation will be concluded successfully and soon. Vale. Vale, esto por aquí ya subimos. Así que hemos podido entrar casi en todos los camarotes, camarotes digo yo. Casi en todos los compartimentos hemos entrado ya. El de Poirot me lo salto. Ahora a Olson, si está aquí... Hello, miss. There is more snow coming, I think. Greta, you know Monsieur Poirot has asked me to help him investigate the murder. Yeah, I have heard this. It is satisfactory with you? Very. Will you help me? I will try. Vale, ahora pregunta otra vez. Vale. Yo pensaba que esta, esta daba... Era profesora, pero resulta dice que también es enfermera. Bueno, entonces me estaba confundiendo. Cuando ha dicho Olson, cuando la americana ha dicho Olson, pensé que se refería a la asistenta de la de la princesa Dragomirov. Estaba confundiendo, pero no, se refiere a esta. May I have your passport, please? It is here. Greta Sigrid Olsen, 49, of Stockholm. Of course, I am a missionary now, nurse at the school in Gamble. Bueno, estaba yo súper perdido totalmente. Estaba súper perdido porque yo pensaba que era que estaba de misionera en un en una escuela, pero pensaba que era profesora. Claro, no, está de enfermera. Bueno. You gave Mrs. Hubbard a headache powder last night. Yeah. Poor lady with the pain in the head. That was around 10.40, I believe. I am not sure. Esta mujer me da penilla. Did you leave this compartment again after helping Monsieur Poirot? His ankle is not so very injured, you know. I look at it again this morning. I think he is not as brave as some of my little children. After Monsieur Poirot. I walked several times, of course, but it is because you were peeking out and leaving the compartment, not I. After that? When you finally settled down. No, I was very tired from all the activity. I slept. If I had gone out, would you not have noticed? I'm not sure. You were here in the lower berth. I slept until the morning. I slept soundly enough that you might have gone out again. I do not know about that, but I myself was sleeping. Your dressing gown is brown, is it not? Yeah, you have seen it for yourself. Very comfortable of Yeg of all. Did you see anyone in the corridor when you took Mrs. Hubbard the medicine? Not in the corridor, no. Somewhere else? I opened the door to the... The dead man's compartment by Mr. Jake. Mr. Ratchet. I was much ashamed. What did you and Mrs. Hubbard talk about? The pain in her head. It start at the back and sweep itself forward over her eyes and... Anything else? Um, she asked me if the door between her compartment and Mr. Ratchet's is locked. I, I check it for her. And? It is locked. Did you actually see him? Yeah, in his bed he was, reading a book. Did he say anything to you? He laughed. He invited me. I, I do not care to repeat what he said. It inflamed my cheeks. I left at once, naturally, and went into Mrs. Hubbard. 
That means you were the last person to see Monsieur Ratchet alive. I am suspected? Of all the people aboard the train, I am suspected. Hmm. Have you ever been in America? No. Almost I go once. I was to accompany an invalid lady, but it was cancelled. I much regret it. They are very generous, the Americans. They give much money to schools and hospitals, and they are very practical. Una de las cosas que que le falta es que las reacciones. O sea, hay momentos en los cuales hacen las preguntas y falta un poco más de reacción por parte de nuestro personaje o del otro personaje. Directamente, nuestro personaje, por ejemplo, eh, ahora aquí nos permite hacer dos preguntas. O sea, nos permite dos opciones. Y yo le puedo hacer esta pregunta y en el momento en el que ella me diga todo, directamente dices gracias y ya está. Pero faltaría una reacción, no una reacción más. Sería un, una línea de diálogo en el que lo que sé, dijera eh, ah, eso es muy interesante bueno, pues gracias por todo, tal o yo que sé, alguna cosita así no en todos, pero sí que se denota en por ejemplo, ahora mismo ella ha dicho, soy sospechosa, soy sospechosa y ella debería haber contestado no, no es sospechosa o sí, sí es sospechosa es lo que creo que le falta al juego y que me estoy dando cuenta pero bueno, ya estoy fijar el rizo ¿Do you remember hearing of the Armstrong kidnapping case? No What was that? A little girl was kidnapped and murdered. Her mother and an unborn child died in childbirth. A member of the staff committed suicide. Monsieur Ratchet was the man behind the kidnapping. That there are in the world such evil men. It tries one's faith. The poor mother. My heart aches for her. Thank you, Mademoiselle Olsen. Ves aquí el hecho de que corte la conversación y diga gracias, pues tiene sentido. Pero si la otra finaliza la conversación o su frase con una pregunta, pues no es no es lógico que ella diga gracias y finalice. Sino que le diga algo, sería lo suyo. Pero bueno. Esto me parece que siempre estaba cerrada. Ah, no, mira. ¿Puedo cogerlo? Hombre. Mari Hermión Hermión Anda Nothing else. I've already... Vale, aquí están dos Que estoy un poco perdido de quiénes son Aquí hay dos Hermión Devan Mari Hermión Devan, descendiente de ingleses. Esta es el coronel. Puede ser que esta es la que le tira los restos a... El coronel le tira los restos a esta. Un poco mayorcita, ¿no? Me enamorado de Mary. Está muy bien que no se repitan los nombres, ¿eh? porque si no, madre mía, esto sería una locura. Enamorada de ambos, eso es. Bueno, pues yo me esperaba más. Es que bueno, tiene el pelo canoso. Yes, Fräulein. Frau Schmidt, I am helping Monsieur Poirot in the investigation of Monsieur ah, Ratchet's Smith. death. Claro. Will you assist me? If I can. Vale, me estaba confundiendo. Y digo, no puede ser si la veo yo muy mayorcita para el coronel. Esta es la alemana, Smith. May I have your passport? Yeah, here it is. You are Hildegard Schmidt, aged 43, living in St. Petersburg. Where I attend Madame la Princesse. Yeah. Eso es. Muy bien. Esta es la asistente de la de la princesa Dragomirov. ¿Qué puedo decirme de sus movimientos de la pasada noche después de la cena? What can you tell me of your movements last night after dinner? I moved very little. I read to the princess Bleak House. By the English writer Charles Dickens. The sudden stopping of the train interrupted us. Madame la Princesse luckily was not harmed. 
I returned the reading. I do not read aloud very well. But Her Excellency says that it is all the better. So it sends her better to sleep. When she became sleepy, she told me to go. I return to the compartment I share with Fräulein Debenham. What time was that? It was very late. Half past one or, or more. Tell me about Mary Debenham. She is a very agreeable young lady. She was already asleep when I came in after reading to Her Excellency. What color is Mademoiselle Debenham's dressing gown? It is a pale purple. Mauve, I believe the English say. Did Mademoiselle Debenham leave the room at all last night? Not after I returned. I sleep lightly, Fräulein. You understand? Should Her Excellency require me. Have you ever been to America? No, never. I should like to go someday. Do you know who this man Ratchet really was? He was not Ratchet. His name was Cassetti. He was responsible for the death of a small child named Daisy Armstrong. My God! I have heard of that. The kidnapping. It was wicked. Wicked! We are not so wicked as that in Germany. Is this your handkerchief, Frau Schmidt? No, it is not mine. It has the letter H, you see. Ah, but it is a lady's handkerchief, that. A very expensive cambric handkerchief, embroidered by hand. It comes from Paris, I should say. Did you see anyone as you returned to your compartment? Only an attendant. He was sitting at the end of the corridor? No, Fräulein. He came out of one of the compartments in the middle. Two or three doors from Madame la Princesse. Was it Mrs. Hubbard's compartment? It may have been. But I saw him come out. You weren't in the corridor. I most certainly was. He nearly ran into me, apologized and hurried off in the direction of the salon car. A bell began ringing. But I do not think he answered it. Then the bell started ringing? Yes, Fräulein. Fräulein. <laughs> the attendant was Michelle. Our regular attendant? No, Fräulein. What? What did he look like? Small, dark. He had a little a mustache. His voice, when he said, pardon, was weak and high-pitched. Higher than mine. I'd never seen him before. Thank you, Mademoiselle Schmidt. Era otro distinto. Era otro asistente. Bueno, no está mal. No está nada mal. 43 años, macho. Si parece que tenga 60, hija mía. No te cuidas, eh. No te cuidas. Smith y Devan.